All right, so we are going to attempt to cook an octopus that we caught on rod and reel the other day. We actually caught two. One I did not swing over into the boat properly. And I wasn't really targeting them, but I decided, yes, after catching one, let's give this a try. I've never prepared one of these things before, so this is gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna start my first time with more basic approach, and then in the future, we'll maybe do something a little more complicated. Um, I do know octopus is delicious. Gosh, there is so many techniques on the internet of how to prepare this. The first person I called, I called Mario. Fantastic. I mean, I made it, so. I asked him exactly what I should be doing with this, and he gave me a couple of ideas. Absolutely a bycatch type of fishery around here as you're targeting other fish. They are unregulated, but I don't think during the day you should be catching too many. Damn. I think that thing's pretty expensive, right? First one of those in a while, huh? It's an interesting little uh, predicament, predicament we're in. I guess we got catch and cook right there. How do we dispatch this guy? There you go. Join your friends. So basically, this should not take too long. Every recipe calls for cutting right below the eyes, somewhere here, and maybe just above the head. The proper way to put these guys out of their misery is you cut behind the eye. I used my gaff and went right behind the, the right eye here and kind of skimmed right through skimmed right through this surface so this way there's no suffering done to this this creature. Anyway, let's give this a try. Hopefully we don't screw this up. So that you don't want, there's all sorts of stuff in there. We're probably gonna be doing a lot of rinsing. I guess that's part of the beak. Um All right, so this is the hard part. That's the beak. That's what can get you, poke you. That's what it uses to hunt. And after you do that properly, it should be pretty much according to the internet. And then when has the internet ever gone wrong? Okay, there you go. And after you're doing that, you should have a hollow hole here. We got to rinse this pretty thoroughly. It was laying around in my cooler bag, um, just hanging onto my kayak. I'm sure it's got some sand and grit on it. So we will get a bowl of water and rinse that out. All right, so here's the head, which has got all sorts of gunk in it. Jeez. I don't think I cut high enough on the head. I've got too much organs here, man. Yeah, that's all or organs. So first mistake, I didn't cut high enough on his head, but now I think we're good. Um, we're gonna get a bowl of salt water over here in a second, um, just to really rinse all this out. I think we got that. We got all the skin. 
uh, in here. We got might have a couple organs we don't want. All right, that's basically the top. Um, what we got to do now is we got to give this a pretty thorough rinse in the saltwater brine. Get ink and all that stuff out. This is all garbage trash. All right, next I got to basically, I think I, I at least, <laughs> excuse me, next I have to. I think I should be giving this a couple rinses to get all the ink out and give this, you know, a minute. So I made a simple saltwater brine here. Um, and also, I guess, if I missed a couple spots in this, I want to make sure I really clean these tentacle suction cups because they might have some sand in there. They might have some grit from the rocks, all that stuff. So um, we're going to really give this a couple rinses. I think we're good to go here. I'm not getting any more grime coming off of it. Um, it looks it looks pretty good. So we're going to get this guy back in the fridge. Then we're going to prep up our, our boiling solution. Probably just throw it on the cast iron to, to, to give it a quick finish. So there you go. All right, folks, here's what we're going to boil our octopus with. Um, basically, I am winging this based on the weight of the octopus, so you're going to have to follow along. Parsley, celery, some thyme, garlic, onion, lemon, about a cup of wine. We have our pot of boiling water right here. Uh, let's start adding everything to it, and then we're going to bring it to a gentle simmer. Scald the octopus quickly. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then from there, boil it. I'm going with at least 45 minutes to start with. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, joke. So we're getting there. First thing we're gonna do, I don't know, I've got about four tablespoons of salt. Get that in there. A cup of white wine. Stirry stir. We're looking to bring this to a gentle boil. You don't wanna, this, you're not making pasta, right? All right, let's get the rest of the goodies in here. Parsley, celery, thyme, lemons, crushed garlic, half an onion. That's gonna give us all our flavors, so. Let's continue heating that up, a couple more minutes, and then we're going to put the octopus in. Apparently the right strategy here is to dip the octopus about four times, so partially submerge it, right, one, two, three, four, yank it out. Otherwise it's going to turn into a big octopus ball. Alright, so now that we did that, we can just drop it in, make sure it's submerged, put the pieces of the head in. All right. And what we're going to do, I'm going to reduce the heat. So we'll check on this in 45 minutes. We brought the heat down. Uh, we want to really just get this at a gentle simmer. So I don't want to scald it or overboil it. So I will mommy this very carefully. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. The ingredients have started to settle. So what I'm trying to do is See, all right, so it's not ready yet. Um, supposedly the fork should kind of just dig right in uh, with a little bit of force. So it's been about an hour, just under an hour. And uh, yeah, the fork is kind of sitting in perfectly. It's got some resistance, but it's not like, I'm not forcing it anymore. Um, yeah, it's, I think that's pretty good. That's what we're looking for in the consistency. So, turn off the heat. And what we're gonna do is we're not taking this out of the pot. As soon as we take it out of the pot, it's gonna suck up all that room temperature air and dry out. So basically what we're doing is we're letting that chill. Tomorrow I will pull it out of the refrigerator, dry it off, take it out of the water, throw it on the cast iron and you know, finish it. It is a process. It's not hard at all, um, the preparation of this. Um, oyster toadfish, for example, was a much more gnarly cleaning process if you ask me. This is pretty easy, it just takes a little bit of time. More time than for example blue crabs, but it's pretty easy. Let's see if I made a major mistake with it. All right, it's the next day. Our octopus is ready to be transferred. Uh, we're gonna probably uh, one, maybe into four, and we'll throw it on the cast iron behind this. And take it from there. Let's see how it comes out. I'm going to dry it off first, though. Um, I'm going to just wrap it in a couple of paper towels uh, to prepare it for um, for cooking. Okay, so we pulled our octopus out of the fridge. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to preheat our cast iron pan. All I did to the octopus is rub a little bit of olive oil on it, uh, add a pinch of garlic, salt, and pepper. Throw it on the cast iron on a very high heat. Get the outside charred and get the inside warm. And then we're just served with a little bit of green onions and a slice of lemon. 
give it a try. So hopefully we don't screw this part up. Um, I wouldn't say it's squishy. It's hard to describe the texture of something like this. It doesn't give me this chewy feel that I would expect to it, but it's not like mushy that I'm, it has too much give. So I think we got the texture part down. Let's finish it off and hopefully not screw it up. So follow me along here. All right guys, here we go. Three minutes, little flip, and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be ready in a second. Get a little green onion action going. All right, just uh, I want to try it without too much. All right, just a couple drops here. If I need more, I'll add more. All right, and last thing, a little bit of lemon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try it. Are you excited? I am. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That's dang good. That is so good. For my, for my first octopus attempt mm. amazing yes I did not perfect this I understand that but as a Guggen octopus preparer I'm excited how well this came out and how good this was this part towards the, I guess, um, towards the head of the octopus is so meaty. It's like a, it's like a steak of the sea. That's exactly how I would describe it. It is the steak of the ocean. That is a treat and a half, man. There is nothing I have caught as bycatch in my fishing career that I have enjoyed more than preparing my own octopus. One hell of a dinner or lunch. I'm excited to try preparations in different ways. This is probably my favorite catch and cook sort of outing um, that we have done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed, loved it, try it. If you catch one, absolutely give it a try. They're not that rare off the coast of Carolina. Um, or of course, you know, you can dive for them. Looking forward to my next one. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch up with you guys very soon. Um, right here, I am wearing the new j &H Halloween zombie striped bass shirt. You can order these through j &H.com. They got a pretty cool graveyard on the back of them. Um, we actually caught these on one ounce bottom sweeper jigs. I was targeting redfish and this was my bycatch. Um, so the bottom sweeper jig works for the octopus, huh? Uh, and pieces of blue crabs, that's what we use. So glad you enjoyed. I will catch up with you guys very soon. We put up an awesome fishing video on Wednesday that kind of got smothered down on YouTube's algorithm because I had to re-upload it because of demonetization issues. Um, that's a really good fishing video for the guys that like the fishing vids as opposed to the Lifestyle bids, whatevs. Later, guys.